Hi, Minesh Bakshi here, and I am joined by my good friend Laurel here. And Laurel is a fabulous person, a mom, a super entrepreneur, a yoga enthusiast, and you can talk about a lot of different things as well. But she's a fun person to be around, and I just love knowing her. And when I visited her in Vegas as well, it was like, wow, she's just a great, great person to know. So Laurel, welcome. Thank you, Manash. Happy to be here. Yeah. And so I think the crux of all of this is for me, and I know for you as well, being a parent is so important, right? And I heard the song Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon, which some people may not know, is from Cat Stevens, where the father was never available for the son. And I did not want to be that father which is why I designed my life totally around my family. And I know parenting is very important to you because you work with your son as well. And you have a lot of good things going on in your life. Now you're a grandma as well. And I'm sure you can talk about that too. So first of all, introduce yourself because people may not know what you do and uh, where you're located. My name is Laurel Mardian. I'm located here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have been in real estate for 27 years. And three years ago, I went and got licensed to do mortgage loans. Um, I'm a yoga instructor. I'm a mom. I'm a grandmother, as you spoke. And um, being a parent has been one of my best things that have happened in life because I didn't want to be one. <laughs> And when I got pregnant at 18 and I found out I was pregnant with Daniel, I really knew where I stood as far as like for my own personal decisions, that this was the decision that I was going to go with and that I was going to prove the world wrong that single moms do it better. <laughs> and I think, you know, one of the sayings that I love and memes that I've seen come across the internet that I wholeheartedly believe in is You've done a great job parenting if your adult children still want to hang out with you. So for those of you that don't know who I am, my son in 2017 talked me into leaving my corporate America job with one of the biggest home builders and going to work with him. And I made it like three months and I ran back to corporate America for like two more years because it was scary. Um, but now we own a real estate company together and we work day in and day out. And it's because of his vision that we're able to do that. You know, the loan license was definitely his idea. Um, the yoga is my passion, but really like what we're great at and what we do well together is the real estate, you know, and I feel like that is a big testimony to, how well I did parenting him, especially being a single mom raising a man. Well, I think that is, I met Daniel as well. And uh, I know you both work very well together. And it's inspiring to hear that the mother was inspired by the son. I mean, that's really not always the case. It's usually the other way around, right? Like to some degree, you know, obviously I'm the one who is dictating terms to my daughter's career. But my goal has been very simple. I just want her to develop enough basic skills that she can swim in the deep ocean. But now at least I've trained her to swim in a swimming pool. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Yeah. And I think that has been my focus. Uh, and, you know, she's doing well. But more important, I think in our case that we obviously work together with our children too, is it gives us a purpose. It doesn't, it just excites me. You know, it just energizes me a lot as well. So knowing that, obviously having a baby at 18, having all these challenges. What are some of the things you learned in the process that you would love to share with our audience? So hopefully some of the parents can be inspired, but they also can pick up some tips from you. So one of the things that I always revert to is these are gifts, whether you want to believe it's from God, whether you believe it's from the universe, whether you, Buddha, wh whoever, whomever you believe in, they are our gifts. And they are given to us to instill, you know, values, core beliefs, and skill sets so that they can go out and operate into the world because they're just on loan to us. And so what we what we do with them while they're on loan to us until they go out and create their own families and do their own things are the most important things, I feel like, you know, so being a good example you know, instilling, you know, good 
I mean, one of the things that I did with Daniel that I can tell you is like, I felt like there needed to be discipline. And my family was like, you are so strict with him. And I, I, I don't feel like I was strict to the point, like my dad was strict just to be strict. And that was one thing that I didn't want to mimic from his parenting. So I always made sure the discipline matched the punishment, right? So if it was something small, it was something, a small discipline. If it was something big, it was a big discipline. But one of the things that I did stick to is if I said I was going to do it, no matter how hard it was, I stuck to that. I mean, there was a time, there was one time that Daniel really got in trouble and I told him I was going to do something and I made him walk to the local grocery store and push carts for 10 months. And there was nights I would call my best friend Tyson and like cry and be like, I don't want to make him do this anymore, but I have to, you know, and, and Daniel will tell you that was a pivotal moment in his life. When I said I was going to do something, I instilled the discipline and made him follow through with it. He'll still tell you to this day that that was like, he was definitely making some bad choices. You know, he went off-roading in the desert with some friends and it wasn't safe on his vehicle. And when I took his vehicle away and made him give up his detailing business and walk to the grocery store every day, he will tell you because I meant business and I stuck to it is like some of how I instilled grit in him. So I can say, you know, as tough as it may seem, to lay down ground rules and then stick to those rules and instill that into them. It's what you're setting them up for the future, you know? Well, the other thing mm -hmm. I will tell you that I learned in all of this is communication, okay? So when Daniel was younger, Snapchat was really big. And even though like I wasn't into Snapchat, I downloaded and installed Snapchat so that I could communicate on his level. So find, I mean, I don't know if it's TikTok your child's on, if it's Instagram they're on, like whatever their major communication is, even if it's not something you're interested in, be interested in it. Like learn it. Like I didn't, I wasn't in a Snapchat. Half my friends are like, why are you on this Snapchat thing? I was like, because then Daniel and now his wife, you know, they communicated with me on that platform. So find the platform in which speaks to your child and be open to being on that platform. Even if you don't communicate with ever, other people, even if you use that platform to like direct message your child in Instagram, because that's their form of communication, you have to get out of being like that you're this age and that you're not going to be on their platform because that will get you so much more communication, which keeps the open line of communication, which keeps everything going, right? Absolutely, I totally agree with you. I think the two points you mentioned uh, remind me like my son did not wake up at a certain time that he was supposed to and I thought he was being, you know, not, he was being disobedient. So my wife dropped him off at the church and he had to run back seven and a half miles, you know. Now, luckily enough, he does know a little bit of running, so he was able to do it. But you know what I'm talking about, right? It was the same thing since that principally that you're talking about. You and I agree on that part. Uh, I think it's totally, you have to learn to discipline children at a young age. Now, regarding Snapchat, I have an interesting story, and maybe already I told you or not, but uh, when my daughter was 11 years old, one night I woke up and I see that her light is on, you know what I'm saying? And I walked in and I found that she was some doing some video chat, Snapchat, you know, whatever she was doing. So I took away her toys. I was not like you getting on Snapchat. So that could have been something I could have done. But what I did do, which I think, you know, the story behind is that when we were in Michigan, so we went to Florida for three months and went to Disney like 70, 80 times in 90 days. You know what I'm saying? And again, I didn't go all day, every day, but we spent a lot of time together doing things that were important to her, that she enjoyed. And for, I think, four or five years, we did something similar, right? Guess what? She's never going to forget those moments. And no. she knows that I invested that time in her and it has paid back 
in spades for me because when people used to say when she was 16 as an example I remember sitting next to somebody whose daughter was also 16 at the airport waiting for the plane and I said how old is your daughter 16 he's like oh my daughter is 16 too it's like a ah, teenager you know that typical expression people use I'm like I have no issue with my teenager like I'm not just trying to be nice this, this is real I have no issues at all but that's because you just like you said you're disciplined and you were communicating consistently in a way that it was a bond that developed over time period. So congratulations to you for figuring that out because most parents, I'm surprised, don't figure that out. No, it's so important, you know, because they speak a different language, you know, like Daniel will never know hanging up a phone or like they're not be call waiting or those kind of things that you and I experienced, you know, but there's other challenges and things that they are going to experience and we're not able to relate to unless in fact we learn those things like, you know, AI or Instagram or any of these new emerging technologies that our kids are heavily involved in. We need to be relatable. You know, like we don't just need to be the parent and I'm not asking you to be their friend. I'm just asking you to leave an open line of communication so that they feel that they can come to you in time of need. So they don't go to friends that maybe aren't going to give them good advice. You know, I knew one night when I was home and Daniel happened to be at Jamie's house and a couple of the, you know, kids in the neighborhood had stolen some dirt bikes. And they, you know, I was the mom's house that everybody went to because I was like the fun mom and they knew I meant business. Like they didn't want to mess around with me, but they also felt like there was an open door if they wanted to come over and eat or play video games or whatever it was because I wanted to have that open door policy. And one night they called Daniel and they're like, get your mom to open the garage. And he was like, you better leave my house right now. You call your mom and get her involved in that. And that was when I knew It was an aha moment for me when Daniel in his own moment had a choice to make good or bad, put me in a bad situation, him in a bad situation and make, you know, a bad decision. And he chose the correct decision. And I was like, I've instilled the morals and the values and the things that I represent and that I want him to represent that. And he was tested and it showed that it worked. So You know, when you have those aha moments, you're like, oh my gosh, all that tough, hard work and holding the line and everything that I've done worked. And now I get to see him like flourish in business. And like, you've been a big part of that. Like what changed us was your disc personality test. Cause we used to fight and argue because we were so similar in personalities. And then we took your disc test and we learned how to communicate with each other. And I teach my agents now from having that training on how to do that. And I encourage parents to do their disc personality tests, like for their children so that they, you know, how they like to be spoken to. I didn't realize until years later that because Daniel's introverted, he wakes up with his cup full. So as he engages with people all day long, it lowers his. Well, me, I'm extroverted. So I wake up, so I would wake up singing to him. And if I would have known that when I was raising him, there's no way I would have barged in his door singing good morning, sunshine and all this stuff to him because he was like protecting his energy and retracting from me when in reality, I was just trying to pour into him because that's how I'm poured into. And if you know the personality and the traits of the person of whom you're dealing with, especially your children, it better equips you to do the best job you know how possible, right? Absolutely. I mean, my son, so my daughter is more extroverted. My daughter, my son is introverted. And it couldn't be, you know, obviously, you know, more similar than what you're talking about. Because I know because of his personality style, I know his communication style, and again, it's not comfortable for me to be not, you know, it's not natural, right? Naturally, I'm right. going to be more exuberant. But because I respect his communication style, I'm able to engage in a way that he knows I respect him. You know what I'm saying? I use lower tonality with him. 
I slow down. You know, it's like, you know, you know, you know the terminologies that we have worked with in the past as well. So thanks for sharing that. That was very helpful. And let me uh, ask you a question. Does your son like to stay up late and sleep in? Yeah, he does. And uh, he, the challenge is obviously timings, right? Because it doesn't work well, you know, because, but he still is in the mode. I don't know whether it's a teenager or not. He sleeps a lot more than I would think I did at that age. And I just don't remember ever having challenges. But then in the differences, you know, his calendar is different from what it used to be for me. You know, we used to be homeschool, So he has a little different calendar than he would have otherwise. I know you asked for a reason. So is there anything specific you were trying to gauge with that? So listen, if I can give you any advice from an introvert, creative spirit like Daniel, it sounds like your son is the same. And I wish I would have learned really early on to not be frustrated with those things because the way the world is now, like it's a little bit more adaptable than what it has been in the past as far as like schedule. Like you and I, we're morning people. We like to be up. We're extroverted. That's that's in our nature. And Daniel, by design, does not like to be up early. And because he's a creative like your son, his natural tendency is to be up late and stay up late. And that's when they have like their creative think space. So if you can just remember to have grace with him when you're, you know, dealing with him, I didn't realize those traits when he was young and I didn't have the tools to equip me to understand, like, there's just people that are designed differently than you and I, Manesh. (laughs) And I know you and I are a lot sometimes because of how we are, but they are a different breed and Daniel's become very successful. Now, has he learned to like, change his schedule because of business and stuff as he's gotten older yes but when he was younger I wish I would have had a little bit more grace with him because I would lose my mind because he wouldn't get out of bed because his creativeness would have him up all night thinking and I understand that so it's just that now he works at Chick-fil-a he has to be there at a certain time you know can't negotiate (laughs) those things right and uh, you know early morning running routine with his cross-country team you know so those are imperative that he has to adjust, which is not something, you know, I'm more flexible in general because of the way we work. But yeah, I totally agree with you. I should give him grace and I should be more aware before I take further action. Now, do you think you had any influence? And if you did consciously or, you know, however you did on the two things which I want to uh, like bring up. Now, one is career and the other is money mastery. So I'd love to hear any comments you have, any thoughts, what you might have. Either you can say that would have been good that you did that or you should have changed something, but whatever. I'm I'm open to however you brought up Daniel or have some suggestions. What's funny is I bought my first house before Daniel bought his. Um, But I just think that was like out of spite for my parents. Uh, But I just... It's funny how it works as parenting, right? Because like, I feel like sometimes like I've told Daniel things and somebody else can tell Daniel the same thing and he'll hear it better from somebody else than he will me. I did not bring Daniel up thinking that he would want to be in the real estate business in any way, shape or form. Like it was the furthest from my mind. Um, So he was heavily involved in it because one of my rules was before I went to work for the home builders, I had like a seven year about that I worked for myself. And I told my clients if they wanted to work with me, they had to deal with Daniel coming because I was a single mom. He went everywhere with me. And so if I needed to write a contract or do an appointment that I couldn't have Daniel there, cause I really needed to give my attention to detail I would let them be with my dad who also was in real estate because my whole family is in real estate. Right. So I grew up, you know, people learned Spanish, English. I learned real estate English and didn't want any, a part of the business until I got into it. So I never like equipped Daniel with the skill set other than by being around it. So like, as he got into the business and he heard the skill set, had I prepped him for the business, I probably would have done it differently. I don't know that the outcome would have been different. So yes, for sure. 
me being in real estate definitely impacted Daniel wanting to be in real estate. Shockingly enough, because of how much time it took and, you know, we didn't have like a set schedule compared to some of his friends. I was shocked for sure. And I think that I could have been better with teaching Daniel at a younger age about money. Like, I think when I started, I started too late, you know, the things to do or not do. And I wish I would have started like as a toddler, like teaching them then. That's if I could go back and do anything different, I would have taught them then. The earlier, the better. I agree with you totally. Now, I started her uh, Roth IRA, Muskan's Roth IRA at 14, just because I know, you know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, I can help do that. Uh, most parents don't know that just as a side advice, this is not uh, an advice you have to talk to somebody specific for your situation, but Roth IRAs can be used for buying a house. You know, they can be used for education. They can be used for healthcare. You know, so they can be used for things that most people don't realize and before setting up a college plan, I would recommend put up a Roth IRA plan. You know what I'm saying, right? Because the world that is changing so fast uh, with AI, a lot of these people who are going to school, colleges for careers, which are going to be obsolete by the time they come out. I mean, there is no question about it, right? It just makes no sense to invest three, four years in a college today unless you're going for something very specific, like being a doctor or whatever. You know what I'm saying, right? Otherwise... AI can spit out code very well. They can put out contracts very well. I have a real estate agent friend who loves AI. He gets excited. I was talking to him today and he created a legal document through AI and then went to his lawyer for you know cross-checking. The lawyer was impressed. He said, this is a great first draft. Wow. Right? <laughs> this is where the world is headed. Okay. And I don't think parents are understanding, children are understanding that the mo like my children have, by design, they can't have any college degrees. They don't even have a high school diploma. They're not going to have it, right? Because I don't want them to fall back into an identity. This is all I can do. Because if they grow up to be a physical therapist as an education, then they think they can only be physical therapist, right? And guess what happens? The world is going to change. <laughs> like in your case, you evolved in different ways and you're still evolving, right? Because what? The marketplace is changing. And if I oh. bring my children into the world knowing fully well that there is no fallback plan and there is only one lane, then there will there'll be a problem. Yeah, I told Daniel, I was like, I don't believe unless you're going to do something specialized, doctor or something of that sort. There's no reason to go to college. I mean, that is one of the major reasons that people can't get qualified for home loans is their student loan debt. It's sad. I have a couple that I, before I even got into loans, it just broke my heart. They came to us for real estate. They both work at the grocery store up the street. They both make a good income, but because they're student loan debt, they're going to forever be renters. It is sad that what they thought was their ticket to the next level, right? Is right. keeping them locked, right? It's pretty interesting to say that. So great, fantastic. Any last second thoughts, what last thoughts that you might have that you want to share about uh, anything relating to parenting or anything that you think people would be benefited from in a short minute here? No, I think we've covered it. Just be open to communicate with your kids. They're still humans. They want to be in your life. Just figure out how that's going to work, you know? Totally, totally. And I'm very grateful to the song that I heard, Cats in the Cradle, because it made me clear on my priorities. And because of that, I enjoy a very deep relationship with my children that I would have never enjoyed had I not known to re reorient my life around it. And congratulations to you at a young age taking on the challenge. And I know Daniel personally, so you've done a great job. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Manash. I appreciate your friendship and I appreciate you having me on and I hope this has brought value to your audience. Well, I know I'm sure it brought value to audience, but it probably brought value to me as well. So thank you. <laughs>